Yo, what is up, boys? Welcome to another very special video for all of you guys because this is a video that I've never done before. This is the first of its kind on the channel. And if it does well, if you guys enjoy it, we might do it for new heroes that'll come out in the future, right? So basically, we are going to be breaking down Novaria, the new hero, everything about Novaria from her skill set to her item builds and even how to utilize her in the land of Dawn. Also, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing this with a little bit of fun, all right? So it's not gonna be just a basic guide. So hope you enjoy the video and let's start. All right, we gotta start with this, man. Moonton has absolutely gone all out with this hero. Literally, I think no other hero has gone this kind of attention from Moonton before. Her trailer is probably the best cinematic animated teaser that they have ever released for a hero. I'm a big nerd, right? When it comes to movies, TV, anime, whatever, every sort of kind of entertainment, I'm a big nerd. So I really enjoyed the teaser video that they actually uploaded here and they made. Uh, with the plot was amazing, the whole time loop overarching narrative. But, you know, I'm just getting sidetracked here because, again, I just want to give Moonton a little bit of props for how amazing they actually made this uh, teaser. But let's get to the breakdown. See, after watching the cinematic, after looking at Novaria's splash art and, uh, you know, everything to do with Novaria, there are two big reasons as to why I love this hero. Her unique skill set and playstyle. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're going to be talking about the skill set first. So, her first skill is Astral Meteor. Novaria will summon an Astral Sphere, basically the circle you see on screen, at a target location, continuously dealing uh, some damage. There's damage over time, but then it will smash to the ground, dealing more damage. And that's actually the most, uh, that's the burst part of this skit. You're going to be dealing magic damage plus 4% of the enemy's max HP to nearby enemies with that sphere explosion. And it also has a slow effect. So what I have experienced so far in the Land of Dawn in my games on Novaria is this Astral Meteor first skill is actually your main damage um, ability for the first few minutes of the game, especially during laning. I found that, you know, usually you want to actually upgrade the skill first, and then you want to try to give it two levels before you actually max out your second skill. Ultimately, you still do max out your second skill that we'll get into a bit later, but your first skill is your main damage source in the early to mid game. Moving on to Astral Recall, this is the main component of Novaria's kit. Heavy emphasis on this skill for all of you guys because of the range and the mobility. So first, Novaria summons an Astral Sphere at a distance and draws it towards her. So as you can see in the video right now, if you cast your second skill in front, you want to try to walk in front to catch it ASAP here so that you can use your second part of the second skill of the Astral Recall, right? So if you're running back, same, whatever direction you're trying to run uh, away to, it really depends. But sometimes you do want to get at that delayed, um, you know, delayed patch onto the Astral Sphere that comes towards you because you want to just prolong the cooldown or, you know, get more space, get more range to play with uh, before you actually shoot your Astral Recall, which is your second second part of the skill because when the astral sphere actually reaches you you can launch it in a target direction within five seconds the sphere will explode when hitting an enemy hero dealing magic damage a lot of magic damage target max hp as well so even up against your tanks you can still use this as a very very good poke tool now the damage will increase based on the astral sphere's travel distance so the longer the range the the further you are from your target you're going to be doing more damage because because the sphere is going to be traveling more. So it's kind of like Layla. It's literally just a mage version of Layla for the second skill. Last but not least is the ultimate, Astral Echo. Novaria scatters Astral Echo in the target direction, briefly slowing them. So this is already some good utility, plus it gives you vision. Well, technically that's what every single skill does. It gives you vision, but Astral Echo is such a good skill, especially towards the late game. And this is what really like puts Novaria or makes Novaria broken, in my opinion. The fact that you can have so much to say in the map, in the Land of Dawn, in the late game when you're not supposed to have vision, when you're not supposed to have this much map control. Even when you're behind, Astral Echo is the magic sentry 
but you can cast it anywhere you want. It will literally just help a lot of the roamers, a lot of your teammates to, to know where people are. It's kind of like a Yi Sun Shin ult, but the thing is, you increase people's hitbox. So everybody you hit with the Astral Echo, it increases their hitbox by 2.5 times after, and reveals them uh, and, their, and their surrounding area. So this effect lasts eight seconds. And with the 2.5 times hitbox, is it, do you feel it? Yes, you do, actually. You can see in these clips right here that it actually does really, you, you can hear, you can see it. You can you can feel the impact, man. I, shooting from here, shooting from there, it it's, yeah, pretty significant. You can't shoot it randomly, but it's still much easier to hit targets on Astro Echo. So we'll get into the combos later on, but I'll definitely show you what I prefer to do on Novaria, offensively, defensively, etc. See, at first glance, you may think Novaria is a typical, long-ranged, high-ground poke-style hero, like Cecilion and Xavier. Well, you're right. It kind of is, but it is a bit more complex than that. For me, Novaria is the complete set. She's a hero that has a very high skill ceiling. Literally, just very high. Her skill set complements the level of skill of the user more so than most MLBB heroes and is also super counterable. When you're up against Dive, it, that's the counterplay. You, it, It's very hard to play around it. Uh, she also excels at playing front-to-back compositions, similarly to every other mages uh, that are, you know, high ground. And because of her second skill, she actually, in my opinion, does a bit better. She has more mobility, uh, especially when she's playing around the walls, and I think that's how you're supposed to play Novaria. Play around the walls so that when people want to try to dive you, you can actually just escape by walking through the walls, and they will need to burn Flicker or burn their resources to get through. And also gives you so many new ways of approaching team fights, gangs, in an aggressive manner. You can use your second skill, like I said earlier, to walk through walls defensively, to escape from a lot of the people trying to dive you, but the team fights can be so sporadic with Novaria. The ganks early game oh, are amazing, are absolutely amazing. As long as you have someone to actually combo together with you, if someone can lock people down, that's even better because you can just snipe them from afar, dealing more damage and getting the kill maybe. So let's get to the way you need to play Novaria. Early, mid, and late game. We'll start with the early game, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Literally play how you would any other mage. Clear your wave with skill 1 and try to roam and get some kills. Try to utilize your second skill to get some good angles to gank early on. Also, you can find these good angles to actually poke down your opponents, because with the range that you have, with the you know, the flexible wall walking that you have, you can actually get some really, really good positions to poke your opponents and punish them even though they can't see you. If you play Farsa, you should understand, but keep your distance, guys. Once you use your second skill, you are vulnerable. You are a sitting duck. You're literally Layla after using your second skill. You have nothing in your disposal to actually get you out. That's why in the Hero Spotlight, you know, the guy actually said, go for flame shot. I'm not a big fan of the flame shot. From my experience, I would much rather have a sprint or a flicker, just a defensive tool because you already have enough range, you already have enough damage. Sure, sometimes it's not enough, but that's the use of your teammates, right, to help you out. So flame shot is way too greedy for me, and you should basically just go for defensive battle spell. Uh, now, mid to late is where Novaria truly shines. Your ultimate really helps the team open up the map. Usually on a high ground hero like this, you need your roamer to open up for you. To even, uh, you know, step in some places on the map. But in this case, you can actually be pretty uh, independent. Help your roamer with vision for ambush and setups too. Usually, you'd think, you know, if you have a Franco, if you have an Atlas, they have to open up the map for you. But in, you know, this meta, sometimes it gets pretty tricky. Where even your roamer can get bursted down like he's nothing. Novaria creates that opening so easily for these big lockdown heroes, for these big initiators, even for the pickoff heroes like the Selena and the Franco. Novaria really enables them to do, you know, their best. They don't need to focus purely on opening up the map mid to late game. The main use of your ult, though, shouldn't just be to get utility uh, with vision. That's a, an added bonus, but to make the hitboxes bigger before you shoot your second skill. From experience, I found that it's best for you to start your combo in a team fight with your ultimate, so that you get those 
juicy targets, juicy hitboxes for every single one of your opponents for you to pop much easier with your second skill. Be careful up against front to back compositions though, because bigger hitboxes when you ult first equals to harder to thread the needle and hit the back line. Your frontliners or the enemy frontliners are gonna be so hard to get through if you actually wanna deal damage to that back line. You wanna also completely abuse your range. The combo I love the most is to start off walking to the team fight with your second skill, to find an angle to get a good ult in, to hit most of the enemy team, but use your second skill the opposite way of the way you are walking, like in the video shown right now, right? You pop that second skill while you're walking, opposite direction so it catches up to you right as you ult the target and you still get to walk around the wall and before you use your second skill try to use your first skill because in these team fights the most reliable source of damage you have in your kit is still that first skill your second skill takes a lot of skill there's a lot of skills going on here but yes your second skill takes a lot of skill to actually hit especially towards the right targets here are the hero combos as well any cc setup heroes would work with novaria but lockdown heroes like kaja or franco definitely give you the easiest time to land your second skill for item builds and emblems i think looking at the hero spotlight this is a very accurate depiction of what i use uh, in my games but personally based on my experience for the items I think Clock of Destiny, Arcane Boots, Lightning Trunch, and Glowing Wand, Holy Crystal, and Divine Glaive is the best combo you can go for. The builds you see in-game, I think, are a bit off, so utilize this build, I think. You know, Burst is the best for this hero. For the Emblem, I disagree a bit here. Well, technically, it's all situational, right? If you're up against a bully, if you're up against a lot of people who can actually dive and assassinate you, going for Mystery Shop is a good idea. You want to try to get those items as fast as possible to make yourself relevant as early as you can. But if you're up against like a proper lane and you're confident in your skill, I would actually say going for an aggressive emblem might be better. You know, go for the magic worship here. It might actually do you more justice compared to the mystery shop. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Novaria takes a lot of skill and patience to fully utilize, but once you master her kit, it'll be very tough for opponents to take you out. The pros of Novaria is obviously the range, the utility, the mobility. The damage early on is a big con though, easily shut down as well towards dive compositions or dive heroes, so that's something that you need to be very, very wary of. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. The broys, y'all are always amazing, always watching, always supporting whatever I do. So let me know what you think about this video too. Uh, anything I should fix, anything that should be better in this video that could be better as well. Please let me know all the feedback that you have in the comment section right now because this is the first time I've ever made a video like this. And I hope I can do more in the future with uh, the new heroes that keep on coming up. And for you guys as well, if you enjoy it, then I'll keep on going. If I if you go, if you don't, then yeah, we'll stop, right? So let me know by liking the video if you like the video, so I know. <laughs> and uh, just tell me what you think about the hero, Novaria. Tell me what you think about her kit, the cinematics that were all just amazing, and everything. Everything about Novaria. Let me know if you like her, hate her, if you've been playing her, or if you just don't really, you know, you don't, you haven't been playing her because she's always banned. Just let me know whatever in the chat right now because I'll read it all. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.